hostile and repressive. That's how North Korea has labeled fresh sanctions from the U.S. It's the latest fallout between the two countries over a cyber attack on Sony Pictures concerning the release of a film depicting the assassination of the North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. The leader of North Korea has fired back with his response to even more American sanctions. The back and forth bluster gains new hot air and still the world wonders what if anything effective these current punishments will do to stop a potential madman from toying with that little red button and turning portions of the globe into a warm nuclear glow. Let's welcome to Midpoint, former CIA covert officer, former House Homeland Security Advisor, and currently managing partner at the Enright Group, Joshua Katz joins us. Joshua, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Ed. Happy New Year. To you also. Happy New Year. Let's start Thank out you. the new year then by thinking to ourselves, we're already five days into 2015. Here is the leader of North Korea telling us how we are going to build more military, a military first policy, hostility towards the North. Honestly, Joshua, is there any reason we should put any more salt in what he says this time than what he has said any other time? It, you know, and I think since uh, 1950, uh, our interaction with the North Koreans has been summed up by this sort of reaction, right? So the, the North makes some really outlandish uh, reactions to, to a policy that we have uh, we really, really cannot put any any faith or any weight on what they say. It's it's just a, you know, almost you know, over 60 year talking point. But with regard to sanctions, then, because that's the policy that this president has taken and so many others have in the past. We're looking at a repressive nation that already has heaped upon its sanctions. What more can you really do to create a breaking point that would force them to the table? Right, Ed, and. So, you know, since 1950, uh, we have put basically total economic sanctions on North Korea. And, you know, the president uh, a couple weeks ago did some uh, executive action against Cuba, in which he said our, our policy there was failed. We've been, we had sanctions against uh, the, the Cuban um, regime for over 50 years. Nothing had happened. But the president now, with North Korea, goes back to a, you know, 60-plus year uh, policy with North Korea that has yielded nothing except for a nuclear North Korea. Uh, so I, I think that's a great question. Where do we go? What do we do? How do we string North Korea and push them into uh, into substantive talks? Well, right? aren't we in many ways, if we're pushing them in whatever direction that we are, because we see what the president is doing with Iran, for instance, right now, it, it, there seem to be some correlations to be drawn here with regard to sanctions. Are we not just in many ways pushing the North Koreas and the Irans of the world closer together because sooner or later it becomes the enemy of my enemy is my friend and you're going to look for all these these different budding nuclear powers, if you will, to get together. That has a new danger to it, which I don't think we're willing to discuss. Well, I, and, uh, that, you know, as, as usual, you come up with a, with a great point, uh, and, and that's true. I think the administration is trying to, uh, trying to really wait out uh, North Korea, try to get rid of this uh, and put this off their table. We're seeing that also with Iran. Uh, we know that the administration, and, and with their sanctions and with the talks, which aren't really going anywhere, it's more of a waiting game, right? And so when we're pushing these, uh, these people who really have nefarious intent against the United States and our interests, we're pushing them closer together, and, and they, they are working together. Uh, now, you know, the, the sanctioned regime, though, uh, in the, these cases is not really working, uh, and we need, we need new tactics here. All right. Now, I've got about a minute, and then we'll take a break. going to put you on the spot here, then. New tactics. Name That's right. One. Name one. An idea. Yeah, so uh, we, we know uh, that the economic sanctions for over 60 years with North Korea haven't worked. Uh, so what we need to do in, in this case uh, is to bring them more into the age uh, of the modern era. Uh, you know, I like to say we need to embrace them with our capitalism. Uh, you cannot, we can't negotiate with a North Korea that is constantly behaving uh, in an irrational manner. Uh, we have seen that our tactics in the past haven't worked, so let's reverse them. Let's go after North Korea and let's, uh, let's hug them with our capitalism and our democracy. That's an interesting idea, and I'm sure that all the consumers and all the companies here in America would love to be able to see that and get a hold of what little money there is left in North Korea. Uh, stand by, because we're going to come back. Former CIA covert officer Joshua Katz is back. Short break. We're going to bring the discussion home to America. 
also discuss Boko Haram. And this is a terrorist group that we don't talk enough about and what they have done now to basically push their importance to a level where as Americans, we might need to be concerned. Homeland Security, so much more. It's all coming up right here as we continue on Midpoint.